Good morning. If you didn't already know, I'm George Latimer, Interim Senior Minister at Kings Highway. In a moment, you will also hear from Ellie Bolness, our Associate Minister. We are bringing you these words today to offer a worship experience to our members and friends and to provide a way to stay in touch over the internet. Well, truly, in many ways, we have never done it this way before. But our decision to cancel services is part of a nationwide, indeed worldwide, attempt to slow down the uh, COVID-19 virus and to protect the most vulnerable among us. With the unprecedented measures taken by federal, state, local governments, schools, colleges, businesses, churches, organizations, and clubs, even families and individuals, we have a chance to greatly lessen the severity of this pandemic. Hopefully, most of us won't get infected, and those that do will have relatively mild symptoms. However, people of faith have always had a heart for the most vulnerable among us, and we are closed today so that we can develop procedures and practices that will let us safely worship together without needlessly and thoughtlessly exposing those most at risk to the virus. Government directives and other pronouncements and cancellations have come at a head-spinning pace these last few days. We know a lot more about COVID-19 than we did a week ago, and I expect this trend will continue. That will help us understand what we need to do to best protect ourselves, our church, and, our, and, and others. Beyond the medical issues, which are, of course, first importance, there are sudden changes to deal with. Parents must make provisions for child care. Colleges and their faculty have a new reality. Tens of thousands of athletes are facing deep disappointment with cancellation of games. Workers are moving home. Some face reduction of hours. Others worry about keeping their job. Certain businesses may be threatened and the stock market's gyrations this last week have been frightening. It's time we need some stability, and it's time we need to know the unchanging love of God that is in us, the reassuring presence of Jesus that surrounds us. So Ellie and I will bring you words today from our church sanctuary, and we hope to remind you again of the faith that makes all the difference in your life and in all the challenges that life brings. As we end our service today, we ask that we all together share in communion. As Jesus used ordinary food uh, from that first table of communion, uh, find something in your kitchen that you can share in communion today. Maybe a, a cup of coffee and a cookie or a cracker and some milk, water, whatever. I invite you to get up and make that preparation. We'll play some music so you don't have to pause us, and we'll start our service in a moment. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.
loving God, you are majestic beyond all other light and beauty and power, yet are more intimate than all other friendship and love. By the power of Christ, lift us high above our fears and worries, preconceptions and expectations into the light and power of your presence. Well, there's a lot of concerns today. A lot of concerns about unknowns and what's next and how we're going to cope. I'd ask you to remember those that are suffering illnesses right now. The children whose schedule have been disrupted. Those who are worried those whose lives have been disrupted. And pray for your church to help us to plan to allow us to gather again in this space. We will keep you updated on changes here, but remember us all as we work together to get through this. May we pray together. Please join me in prayer. For the needs of our church, family, and friends, we lift their needs to you. Bring us the hope of healing and the com comfort of fellowship. Watch over us as we respond to unexpected challenges and guide us as we make new plans for this new reality. Be with all, especially the children of poverty the worker without insurance, the physically compromised, all who are afraid of an unknown disease. Bless the emergency responders, doctors and nurses who are exposing their own health to serve others and reassure their families as they spend extended time away from home. You, O oh God, are the great healer and comforter. Be with those who are quarantined. Bring healing to those who are infected. For those who have lost loved ones to this virus, easy their grief through your love and guide them to resources to help them through the loss. A new challenge has come upon us and with fewer opportunities to find comfort in being with one another. Help us in following Jesus' example, who often retreated to quiet spaces to seek comfort. Guide us into our ways that we can celebrate in community from a distance. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, Give us faith beyond our understanding and love beyond measure. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. In thinking about something that might be appropriate today, this week the words of the 23rd Psalm came coming to me. They read, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's been a wonderful psalm. It's been shared for 3,000 years. 
a psalm that has helped us in times of fear and panic, in times of tragedy and illness, a psalm that is often shared in hospital rooms to comfort those who are very ill. Today I share it because it is words of familiarity to us. And in these days, we need to hang on to familiar parts of our faith that we not forget them. To remember, if the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. That does not mean we'll have all we want. It means that we will not go wanting for those things that are truly important. The Lord leads us into green pastures and blessings and leads us beside still waters. If you have been canoeing or white water rafting or seen the ravages of floods, you know that waters can be pretty scary. We look to God to lead us beside peaceful places that he can restore our souls. There was an ancient thought that each night as we slept, our soul went away from us. And in the morning as we woke, God restored our soul to us. Certainly we look to the idea that God can restore us and lead us in the right path. The psalm says that even we walk through the valley of the shadow. That's been translated many ways. And indeed, all of us have been, at times, dealing with being in the shadow, being in the dark. But one thing about the shadow, there has to be a light source somewhere for a shadow to be cast. Let us think about the light rather than the shadow because surely we will walk through it. And we'll fear no evil because we know that God is with us. The psalm last stanza has some words that are a little confusing that God would prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies is that a way of saying that God sees us as very special, us as individuals, and God sees about our needs, and even anoints our head, an old custom, but it, it was a way to lavishly endow honor on someone. So goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some say we're just passing through this place and we have a heavenly home. Let us do what we can to live out God's promises in these days with the reassurance that God's love indeed is forever. Would you pray with me? Father God, reassure us with your timeless words. Comfort us in our times of need and be with us always. Amen. In times of fear and change, we can find comfort in celebrating this table, remembering the Lord Jesus Christ that night when he took bread in his hands, gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for
for your forgiveness and salvation. There is a story of an art gallery that sponsored a competition. They were looking for the best painting on the subject of peace. The paintings in the contest were amazing. Some of them pictured the perfect images of a paradise full of flowers the most beautiful landscaping. Some others captured the harmony, love, and tolerance between humankind and nature. However, the winning painting was a mess. The painting presented an angry ocean in a powerful storm, a frightening and dark sky with lightning cutting across and waves crashing into the rocks by the shore. Where was the peace? You had to look twice to understand. Right there in the middle of the cliff was a nest, a bird's nest. Into a tiny crack in the rocks, a mother bird was sitting in that nest with her little babies under her wings, sleeping peacefully. That was peace. This reminds me of our Lord Jesus when he said, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Let us meditate on this as we share this bread and cup in your home and here as well. Let us pray. O oh God, help us to find in our elements of communion those things which call to our remembrance of a risen Lord. Give us the spiritual food which we need for the coming week. We receive your nourishment with genuine gratitude. Amen. Amen. And now... May the peace of God be upon you and with you. May the presence of Jesus guide you in love in his name. And may the Spirit unite us until we meet again in this place. Amen. Amen.